having a haircut. And in this one, we're talking street portrait photography and more importantly, why you're failing at your own street portrait photography. Hi, I'm Dan. I've been a photographer for over 10 years doing street photography and street portrait photography around the world throughout that time. When I've approached people for street photographs, I've had some rejection after rejection after rejection. And it sucks. It's awful. You know, putting yourself out of your comfort zone, asking someone if you can take their picture only for them to say, nah. It feels terrible, but in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some openers, some approaches, and some things you can say so that you never get rejected again in street portrait photography. Stick around until the final one because it might be a little bit controversial, but it's one of them that almost works every time you use it. So stay tuned. So the first one is really straightforward. You approach someone, you tell them your name, and you say, hey, I'm working on a project at the moment, and you would be a perfect fit. Would you be happy for me to take your street portrait? It doesn't kind of freak them out. They've got all the important details right up front. And it's going to help them feel at ease knowing that you're doing it for a project rather than just randomly making photographs of people. The second one, and one that always works for me, is just introduce yourself, say hi. I'm a street portrait photographer and I love the way the light is falling on you right now. It looks perfect and I think it's going to change quickly. Can I make your street po photograph before the light goes away? Now, this works because it gives them a feeling of immediacy. They don't want to miss out, okay? Potentially, they may have a lovely portrait of themselves. And by saying that the light is perfect and that it may change quickly, you're reinforcing to them that now and only now is the perfect moment, meaning they're more likely to say yes because they don't want to miss out on potentially an excellent street portrait. The third one is that you go up to someone and you say that you're trying to capture the diversity of humanity and you think they look perfect and would like to incorporate them into the series. Now, it shows, first of all, you're not only asking them, because that's sometimes what people may think. Why are you asking me? Like, this is a bit weird. There's all these people. But by saying you're photographing multiple people, it makes them realize, okay, you're working on something of course, by saying they look great, it's a compliment. It's going to make them feel good. It's going to help them have confidence in you. And they're more than likely going to want to take part because A, they feel good about themselves. And B, they know you're not just some random uh, approaching them specifically. It's part of a bigger project. So try that one out and I'm sure it's going to work well for you. Okay, so the fourth one is you go up and you say, hey, I'm photographing people with interesting faces and you really caught my eye and that's a good thing make sure they know that it's a compliment but what it's going to do is make them feel special okay that there's just a select group of people that you're photographing and they caught your eye out of all the possible people you could have selected that's going to give them a little bit of an ego boost a confidence boost and they're more than likely going to want to help you out because you've made them feel better about themselves and incorporated them remember use the word unique. The reason that's special is because people want to feel unique. They want to feel different from the status quo. So by saying that, you're helping them feel different. You're making them feel like they're standing out and they're going to more than likely want to go and stand in front of your lens so you can take their street portrait. The fifth one may be a little bit controversial because it, it involves potentially saying a white lie. And that is, even if you're an experienced street photographer, just say, hey, I'm new to photography. I'm really trying to build up my portfolio. I like taking pictures of people that are cool and that I meet on the street. Would you mind helping me? Now, they're going to have a little bit of pity for you, some empathy. They know you're new. You're figuring this all out. You're trying to build your portfolio. And this is going to more than likely make them want to help you because more often than not, when people are trying to establish themselves in any field, including photography, and people see that, then they're going to want to help them and give them a lift up. And also, by saying you're new, it kind of gives you a little bit of innocence, a little bit of naivety, and that's going to help people trust you more because they'll kind of feel in a position of power while you're this green photographer just trying to do your best to learn about photography and build up your portfolio. So you may feel a bit uncomfortable if you've been doing this for years and years, but give it a try if you aren't getting any success when out making street portraits. 
Okay, so those were five openers that's going to help you stop failing at street photography and start getting more images in your portfolio. But that's just what I do and what works for me. I'm actually interested. What are you doing to get people to agree to a street portrait? I'd love to know how your approach is and your openers. So let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, please do subscribe, give it a share, and also tap the bell icon so no YouTube notifies you when I next publish. Until the next one, I'm Dan. This is Them Frames. See ya.